AMD appears to be making some massive fundamental changes to their next generation GPUs. Some pre-builds will no longer be able to be sold in certain states in the entire United States because they consume too much power and Nvidia might have the power for their next generation RTX 4090 GPU. Let's get into the hot news everybody. I'm your host Brett. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I could find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast, whether that be your first breakfast, your second breakfast, or your evening evening breakfast, we're going to jump right on into talking about AMD's massive, massive, massive next generation GPU. Because it appears that AMD is going to be changing how they're designing their GPUs altogether. This is something that we've known. We've been expecting that the next gen is going to have multi-chip modules as opposed to being a single die. The rumor for Navi 31, the big, big GPU, is that it's going to have 15,360 stream processors, which is four times as many as the RX 6800. GPU, which is a huge leap from one generation to the next. However, it's not because it's going to scale linearly. One of the indications is that AMD is going to be switching over to workgroup processors as opposed to compute units, which means that they're going to end up sharing more resources and not be as individually powered as they normally are. But this could still allow for massive developments on AMD's part. Also being indicated is that AMD is not going to go for getting bigger memory bus widths, but rather rely on their Infinity Cache technology, stacking up the cache on the GPU and then not necessarily worrying about the communication of, over the bus width to the GDDR6 or 6X, whatever AMD is going to go with for the next generation. So the high end GPU is expected to have 30 work group units, which would make it so that it's four times as many stream processors as the current 6800, and it will likely be built on either TSMC's 5 nanometer or 6 nanometer node, and we're expected to see it at some point in late. 2022. So we're still a ways off from this GPU coming out. We're still not necessarily ready for it to happen, especially with the stock shortages. It does seem like we have another year of this current generation, which makes sense because it was such a large leap over the previous generation. It can kind of sit for a little bit, but it could either be that this rumor is meaningless and that AMD is going to continue to give us compute units, or they're making some massive fundamental shifts that can make our DNA 3 a game changer. What do you think of the next generation of AMD GPUs? Let me know down in the comments, and I'm going to let you know about today's episode sponsor, Manscaped. My friends, today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of stuff from their all-in-one performance package 4.0. The first thing that I want to talk about in the performance package 4.0 kit is the Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer. This is Manscaped's fourth generation electric waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts on the most sensitive region of your bodies, namely your Dragon Balls. This lawnmower 4.0 trimmer has a super smart cordless charging system, and these little LED lights on the front are there to show you how much juice you have up to 90 minutes of use with a full charge, which if you're taking 90 minutes to just clear the hedges there, how long were you abandoned? If you're taking 90 minutes to clear your hedges, you might want to do it a little bit more regularly. You can also tap the button on the front three times and it enables the travel lock feature. Also included in the performance package 4.0 kit are two products that you never knew you needed until you pick them up. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. If your Dragon Balls have turned to stone because you used up all your wishes, just apply the Crop Preserver after your shower for all day body odor protection. And the Crop Reviver is a convenient spritz with cooling aloe vera to quickly refresh the area whenever you need it. Shenron, on command, however you want it. Manscaped really has you covered from head to toe. And this is their Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. It's a wireless nose trimmer with the same skin safe technology as the groin trimmer, so you don't have to worry about tugging or cutting those sensitive little nose hairs, which I cry every single time because I've been resorting to yanking it. No longer. No more nose yanking for Brett with the weed whacker. And for a limited time, you get all of this, plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. And you can get 20% off, plus free shipping, plus those two free gifts at Manscaped instantly by going to manscaped.com forward slash UFD, which will be linked in the video description. Again, that's Manscaped dot com forward slash UFD to get that 20% off that free shipping plus the two free gifts. Big thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. And now that we're done with the sponsor, let's get into the crypto stonks update, my friend. 
Bitcoin, it's in the green, up 0.09% to $38,000. Ethereum, however, 1.38% declined to be at 22.44 over the last 24 hours. Dogecoin also down 3% to be at just over 20 cents. It's been a very volatile last 24 hours. As you can see, based on all of these charts, it's been going up and down, and there's no necessarily sense of direction for any of the crypto market at the current moment. GameStop also down 2.94% to close at 178.54, and AMC down 5.6%, basically erasing all of the gains that they made the previous day. It doesn't seem like any direction is being made in any of these markets. It's almost like they're a random walk and you can't predict them. Huh. Staying on the crypto side of things though, Amazon was rumored earlier in the week that they were gonna accept Bitcoin and all of their stuff. We didn't really report on that here at Hot News because that evidence seemed suspect at best. It just seemed like Amazon was hiring to get somebody who knew something about blockchain into their fold and anybody who was saying that they're accepting Bitcoin was kind of going off of one single source. Anyways, Amazon's officially come out and said, that's it's we're not accepting Bitcoin. Not that they're not going to, but notwithstanding their interest in the crypto space, the speculation that has ensued from our specific plans for cryptocurrencies is not true. It's not that it possibly couldn't happen. It could definitely happen in the future, but it's not an imminent thing that's going to be rolled out on Amazon, at least according to them at the current moment. But what's being rolled out by nothing, which is the company that was founded by one of the co-founders of OnePlus, is their $99 Ear One wireless earbuds, which are now going to go on sale August 17th. We finally got them unveiled, in which they started off by telling us that it's going to be a breath of fresh air in a cluttered and indifferent market because everything looks the same. So every, this nothing is going to be great and magical and it's going to be lovely and breath of fresh air. And it's just AirPods Pro colored differently. It's, it's just a wrapped AirPods Pro with like a Happy Meal toy case for the charging things. Like that's the general response that I've seen to these on the internet is that like, you said you're changing things, but they look exactly the same. What are you talking about? And it doesn't help that they really didn't talk about audio quality during their presentation of these things at all. I haven't seen any reviews pop up as of yet. The $99 price point's not too bad. You're supposed to get five hours of playback with 34 hours of total playback, including the case. It's gonna have tap and gesture controls, Bluetooth 5.2, IPX4 water resistance, as well as having that transparency mode with no active noise cancellation. The price point and the feature set seem good. How's sound quality? If, if it's not amazing, if it's not like truly next level, I really personally, based on what I'm seeing here, don't expect nothing to survive as a company because their entire thing was like, technology needs to change. Ah, but they they changed nothing and my graphics card just fell down. They, they, they changed, they skinned the AirPods Pro. What do you think of the Ear Ones? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, Sony releasing a new camera, which is essentially a camera that they've released many times, but now has new feature sets. It's the cross hybrid between the A6400 and the Sony ZV-1. Now we've got the ZV-E10. Why they have to get complicated with the name, it's now here. It's essentially, as I mentioned, a mixture between the A6400 in that it has a replaceable lens system, but it has the ZV-1 features such as the flip out screen, as well as the microphone up top, and it's made for more vlogging, so in case you're interested in getting a new camera, this might not want to be on your radar, especially with it only costing $699. And while the ZV-E10 is a mixture of Sony's technology, Intel's mixture of technology doesn't appear to be going forward with Z690. There's new reports coming out that even though there was indication that Intel was going to try to get motherboard manufacturers to switch over to 12VO, which is their new power standard for providing power to the motherboard, which normally you do that over a 24 pin, now this would be in a different form factor. However, the reports that are coming out is that Intel's requiring motherboard manufacturers to at least make one 12 VO powered motherboard. But according to this leaker, they didn't say that the motherboard manufacturers have to release it. And it's possible that they actually wouldn't sell well, and it might not make sense for these companies to release them. So we might not be getting these very much at all, even if Intel is trying to push it forward. And it seems like Intel might try to push forward Alder Lake on October 27th, because they've announced another event, which is going to be their fully hybrid innovation event. So we're 
we're expecting that the hybrid architecture Alder Lake is going to be announced there. So in case you want to know more about Intel's next generation CPUs, October 27th might be the date. And Dell might not have a date for shipping more Alienware products, at least some specific ones in certain states such as Colorado, California, Hawaii, Oregon, Vermont, and Washington because of new power regulations that have come out. The California Energy Commission Tier 2 implementation means that there's a power consumption cap on certain systems that are being sold. You can see here that desktop computers can have 50 kilowatt hours per year, plus applicable adders in a table in order to make it so that if you add in, let's say a discrete GPU, you get more kilowatt hours that it can consume, but you can't consume more than what's there. And certain Alienware systems consume way more power than that, especially because the discrete GPU kilowatt increase is based on the memory bandwidth and not on the GPU core, which is just what? I mean, I get it, memory bandwidth tends to scale, but still, that's not like the thing that's consuming the power. Anyways, certain Alienware PC is not gonna be able to be shipped. Other system integrators are likely going to be affected, but it does seem like Alienware is the first one to respond to this legislation, which went into effect on July 1st. So expect companies like Main Gear and Origin and all of those to start saying, hey, we can't sell you this in these specific states because it consumes too much power. Let me know what you think of the power regulations down below in the comments. I'll let you know what I think of the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 monitor, the best gaming monitor that's ever gonna get released. Oh, they announced it, they announced it. It goes on sale tomorrow and it's gonna cost only, I know I'm saying only $2,500, which does, it, it is a lot of money. I'm not, I'm not even gonna discount that, but considering that this is a mini LED version of their best gaming monitor, and it's only $2,500, that's absurd. Especially considering if you try to go on Amazon right now to pick up the Asus ROG mini LED monitor that they have, it costs you $4,000. This actually isn't all that bad. The previous one cost two grand, so this is a $500 increase, which is 25%, but you're getting mini LED, which is up to 2,000 nits peak brightness. That's insane. 5120 by 1440 resolution, 240 hertz response time, one millisecond pixel response time, 240 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond pixel response time. This thing is a beast. Obviously the previous one did have issues where they had to put it on hold because like the physical panel was separating from the plastic. Anyways, hopefully they've resolved that, but just, oh my gosh, so many local dimming zones that they have a black level of 0.0004. This, ah, I want it so bad. I don't have $2,500 to spend. It goes on sale tomorrow. Samsung, hook me up. I'll put it right behind my head, right there. It'll fit perfectly. That 49 inches, I, I think it's 49 inches. If not, I'll, I'll make a space for it, okay? The hot new set can get bigger. Samsung Odyssey G9 Neo, I'm so excited for it. And you might be excited for the RTX 4090 because there are new rumors coming out about this GPU, which indicate that it might be 100% faster than the RTX 3090. All of these rumors are essentially saying it's double, it's super fast. Oh my gosh, look at how big the GPU is. It's gonna be amazing. It seems like we're in that stage of either fake GPU rumors where people are making up and uh, hyperbolizing, or we're in the stage of like, no, they're actually making supreme generation improvements. It's great. So the RTX 4090 based on TSMC's 5 nanometer, 18,432 FP32 performance at 2.2 gigahertz, which would give you 81 teraflops of performance, 384-bit GDR6 cache to go at 24 gigabits per second to make a 23% increase in memory bandwidth over the 3090. And then again, that 81 teraflops would mean that it's twice as fast as the current 3090. Do you believe this? Would you pay $1,500 for it or knowing NVIDIA, would you pay $85,000 for it? Because the price is just going to go up. Let me know down in the comments. And would you pay money for Intel's new naming schemes? You should check out yesterday's episode of Hot News right over there where you can find out more. And I will see you tomorrow for breakfast, my friends. Catch you up on the tech news then. Cheers.